So Javante Davis trainer, Calvin Ford, he came out where he completely shut down. Crawford versus Javante fight talks. Calvin Ford said the only reason why Javante said he will knock out Crawford at 147 was to get eyebrows out of people. In other words, get people attention, which is an unusual behavior for Javante. I mean, I know Calvin Ford didn't mean it this way, but he pretty much said in a polite way. Javante was only clout chasing Crawford when he said he was going to knock him out at 147. Here is exactly what Calvin Ford had to say. Check it out. He was just playing around. You know what I'm saying? Tank does that, you know, to get an uh, a eyebrow out of people. Like, you know how the, the rock, when he put the eyebrow up, and <laughs> yeah. he did get it. That's just like when they talk about uh, Enway. You know what I'm saying? He weight classes down to you, and everybody says something about that fight. So you think both of those fights are unrealistic, Crawford? Um, now, like I said before, I believe Javante was only talking shit. However, him talking shit to Crawford did backfire. Because Calvin Ford said the fight is not realistic, just like the Inui fight versus Javante is not realistic. Which, to some extent, he got a point, depending on who are we talking about here. Because Javante versus Crawford is more realistic than Crawford versus Canelo. Since, in order for Javante to fight Crawford, he only has to move up two weight divisions. That's still a whole lot. However, when you compare that to Crawford versus Canelo, Crawford has to move up three weight divisions in order to fight Canelo. And guess what Crawford said? He's willing to do it. Something Inouye and Javante are not willing to do. Which, this is what makes Crawford a top five to top ten all-time great. And this is another reason why Crawford versus Javante fight doesn't make sense to Javante team at the moment in time due to the fact we all just witnessed what the smaller man Crawford did to the bigger man Errol Spence. Crawford delivered the most one-sided dominant performance in the history of the entire sport at the highest level. Do you know how impressive that is? So can you just imagine what Crawford is gonna do to the smaller man Javante? even though Javante is one of the nicest fighters we have ever seen. However, one thing you don't want to do is give Crawford a size advantage on top of the skills he already possessed. I mean, Crawford showed us that he's on a level of his own. That's why Javante and his team are leaving him alone. Just think about it for a second. Even if Crawford ends up moving up three weight divisions to fight Canelo Alvarez at 168, you best believe Crawford is going to be the favorite to win. Despite the fact Canelo is probably going to end up being 30 pounds bigger than Crawford. That's how good Crawford is. Nevertheless, what Javante can do is what he told us he will do. And that's fight Shakur and Devin Haney. After all, these are the three kings of the lightweight division. Devin Haney, Javante, and Shakur are looked at as Kobe, LeBron, and Michael Jordan. That's how good these fighters are. So the million dollar question after Crawford set the bar so high. Can Javante or one of the three kings produce something as electric and special as Crawford did against Errol Spence when they do fight each other? Now if Javante or one of them can do that, that's the only thing that could top Crawford. But that's going to be extremely difficult to do. I truly believe whoever ends up on top out of the three kings will end up joining Crawford as one of the top five to top ten greatest fighters of all time. With the facts being laid out, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe below. And to be continued on the next episode of Akhi TV. Peace out. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I got a, I got a question for you, Tank. At, at 147, how does uh, a fight with you and Terrence Crawford look? Damn. 147. 147. Chin, I tapped that chin. You know he going to sleep. I already know. I already, I already know, know he, he is. He ain't got no chin. I already know he is. <laughs> Said no chin. <laughs> I hey, I got round five. Shit, yeah, I got round six. Earl Spencer Bud Crawford. Earl. <laughs> <laughs> He can't go against his boy. He, he doing what he's supposed to be doing. I respect nah, that. Nah, I ain't. I know for sure.
I know for <laughs> sure. I like, I like, I'm going with Bud. Ain't why. I think he he's why. I think no, we we rapping, me and the champ rap. I just think that, you know, Earl just he hadn't been in front of nobody with with the tools that Bud got. I think Bud can give him a little bit more problem than a lot of guys standing in front of him with bricks in their shoes. I think Bud ain't gonna stand there and it wouldn't behoove him or be smart to stand there and try to trade with Earl. He would have to box Earl. All right, but now you see how you say that, right? Okay, imagine, imagine, imagine we in a, let's just say we in a gunfight, right? Yeah. And I got a metal shield, and and the opposite person got a glass shield. <laughs> okay, Chad. Who come out? Who gonna come out on top? The guy with the metal shield. Okay. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but how much he run around once them once them hands get on him, it's gonna slow him down. And once oh, yeah, definitely if he touch him, he he definitely if he touch him clean, he'll break him down. There ain't no if. He gonna touch him. He gonna touch him. And that's what we're gonna see what he what he made of. That's what we're gonna see his resolve and what he's really made of. That'll answer all the questions I need to know who the dominance at 147. If he Touch and break that shield, and Bud can't stand up to that. Gotta let me know all respect. I gotta, I gotta give it to him. I ain't gonna lie. If somebody, if, if he felt like he was gonna win the fight, he would have, he would have took, he would have took this offer that he got, he, they gave him. Oh yeah, definitely. After the uh, second round, when I heard him, I felt as if he couldn't handle my power like I can handle his. I remember him <clears throat> throwing a overhand loop and left, and he caught me right on the button. I think it was the first order, second round. And you know, I was just like, this is it? I was like, oh, okay. You know, it's gonna be a long night for him. I saw um, Javante Davis speaking about you. Is that, is that ever a possible fight? Yeah, if if he wanna des uh, dare to be great. <laughs> he can if be he like all the other fighters that moving up two way classes and you know, daring to be great. You would fight him. Man, tell him to come up there. He got to come to win fifty four. He said, "He said I got a <laughs> I got a glass chin, so tell him to come and touch it." Oh, oh man! Javante <laughs> said you got a glass. He, got, he said I got a glass chin. I said, tell him to come and touch it. At one forty seven. At one forty seven. I make one forty seven for him. <laughs>